Hello, welcome. In today's video, I have some great news. We are looking forward to the emergence of a new 3DS emulator based on Citra. This project promises to bring together the experience of one of the original Citra programmers with a new team, offering a different approach and forming the dream team for the emulation scene. For those who may not remember, after the fall of Yuzu, the development of Citra was also halted, as both emulators belonged to the same group. However, Nintendo never took ownership of the code since the Nintendo 3DS is a discontinued console, with no new official game distributions. It's no longer possible to obtain new games legally unless you buy a physical copy. Since then, several forks of Citra have emerged, each with varying degrees of success. One of the most popular was Lime 3DS, which managed to enhance performance with some hacks, gaining popularity, and even reaching the Play Store. Despite less frequent updates, the project remains active and is highly appreciated by the community. Another notable fork was the one from Pablo MK7, one of the original Citra developers. He maintained a focus more faithful to the original project, prioritizing accuracy over speed hacks. Many of you have commented here and on Discord that there are many similar forks, and that it would be great if the developers could unite to create a single project that better serves everyone. And apparently, that's exactly what's happening. Before we move on to the details, please give a like to support the video's promotion. And if you enjoy news from the emulation world, subscribe to the channel. It all started when Pablo MK7 archived the development of his fork on October 29th. Although there hadn't been any updates for over a month, the project was still active. However, on October 30th, Pablo posted on X.com that he had ceased development of his Citra fork and would now be dedicating himself to a more serious project. He mentioned that downloads of the latest releases will still be available, but future versions will only be released in the new project. On the Lime 3DS Discord, the team also brought exciting news. They announced a partnership with Pablo MK7 and confirmed that the two forks will merge into a new project. That's right, folks. Citra and Lime 3DS will now work together, bringing the best of both worlds, accuracy and improved performance. I'm sure you've never been so happy to see the end of two projects on the same day. OpenSaw still claims that, at this moment, Lime 3DS will be discontinued, with only one last update, version 2119, available for you to use until this new project takes off. He also states that in the initial version, the new emulator will contain features from both forks, ensuring that the previous development efforts are not lost in this transition. He concludes by saying that more details will be shared in the coming weeks. In a second post, he clarifies that the Lime 3DS Discord will not be discontinued, but will be redirected to the new project. For those who have the app already installed from the Play Store, it will not be removed, and once the new project is ready, it will automatically replace the old version of Lime 3DS. In the last version, Lime 3DS brought many new features. I'll summarize them for you now. A feature called Small Screen Position has been added, which can be used with the large screen layout. Honestly, I didn't quite understand what this is. You can now configure the directionals for the circle pad and the C-stick. New command line options were added for the Lime 3DS executable which you can view using the command line 3DS help. Labels in the texture filter drop-down menu have been fixed. A problem where Vulkan might not be available when using the Linux app image in a Wayland session has been corrected. Now, exclusive updates for Android. You can now create shortcuts on the home screen for games using the long press menu. A fixed screen orientation setting has been added in the layout section. The header for the D-pad axis and button sections has been updated. This new version is already available directly on GitHub. As for the Play Store version, I'm not sure if it has been updated yet. Back to the merger of the two projects. Imagine if this trend catches on and the various Yuzu forks start merging to develop just one project? With multiple minds, each with different experiences and goals, we could have a definitive project, perhaps even with options to choose a focus on performance or accuracy. Or would we run into problems with several people trying to lead at the same time? leading to conflicts and increasing the lack of credibility that some projects already suffer from? It's food for thought. Also, this week we will have a video explaining the new forks of Ryujinx, so stay tuned. Thank you for your audience, and see you in the next video.